Hey everybody, so I'm so excited at the responses that we've been getting to the post that I made yesterday regarding ejection speed and could that, you know, theoretically, could that be the reason that some film is underexposed looking and other film gets better development? Um, if you look at the responses, they're fantastic. Um, today, I'm going to try a fun experiment. So I've got a lot of Polaroid film from years back and you know, some stuff from the impossible, some original Polaroid material, but I went today to my studio and I pulled out of the fridge a pack of Frontier Film Generation 3 600 color speed film that was made by Impossible uh, back in 2015. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to see if I take that film, I know damn well with the battery and it's dead, I've, I, but what if I go in, take that film out, let it warm up for a couple of hours. It's been refrigerated since 2015. And I put a little bit of electrical tape over the battery contacts on the cartridge itself, and then put that film in the new iType supported camera by Dennis at Chromatic Parts, and it'll shoot because you've got a, uh, a battery now that's still properly charged. What I'm curious about is a lot of people talk about the chemistry in Polaroid film drying up and going bad over time. That is true. But I'm also curious if you have a proper battery supply, you know, how long is that chemistry really good for? Now, any of you that shot Impossible film years ago know that the stuff is real hit or miss. And this film was an experimental film to begin with, so it was super hit or miss. So I'm not sure if we're going to get anything out of these at all, but I also have other packs of later date black and white film that I'm going to run subsequent tests on. And the reason I'm doing this is I have a lot of fellow artists out there who like to use uh, expired um, Polaroid material, one, because of cost, and two, because they're not looking for a perfect Polaroid to eject. They're looking for something that has mistakes and marks and stuff in it, and that's part of their artistic process. So if you could buy old Polaroid film out to a certain age and use these new iType uh, battery systems that are in a lot of the SX-70 cameras or even the i2 camera, it could breathe life for a lot of artists into this old pack film. So here we have the uh, original Impossible Experimental Frontier version 3, and I just need to cover over these battery contacts, um, specifically because I don't want there to be an issue in Dennis's camera if there is any little bit of charge here causing an issue. So I'm gonna pull out my red electrical tape here, and I, you need to use electrical tape for this at all times because gaffer's tape and stuff like that is not really a good option. All I'm gonna do is just put a little bit so it completely covers the contact. There's one contact. I probably could have done this in one piece of tape, but I guess we're gonna do it in two. I'll cover the other contact 100%. Okay, so both the contacts are covered, and now the plan is I'm going to put that in the camera that I had modified by Dennis, but again, I could do this in a camera by Mint, I could do this in a camera, uh, the i2 camera, anything that has the i-type support. So I'm going to open it up, pop the film in, ah, grab the power bar, make sure it's turned off, it is, I'm pop it in the top. Turn it on, eject the dark slide, and we are in business. Let's take it outside and see how it looks. And uh, let's see what happens. Okay. Yeah, I'm barefoot. It's winter. It's Vermont. I don't care. Okay, so I'm just going to take a standard silly shot, such something like this. I'm really just seeing, you know, how this looks. Once again, this is really old film. And even way back then, it took 15 to 30 minutes to process. So I'm gonna let it come out and let it just sit while I have lunch. And so let's get at it. First, I'll take this general scene right here. I'm gonna focus on the sign. I'm gonna leave my exposure and everything at neutral and just see what happens. Well, it's ejecting properly, so we know that first and foremost, the battery is powering the film perfectly, which is nice. Um, let's take a couple of other shots looking at contrast. 
something like this where you've got like bright contrast shadows. You know, normally I would expect a film that's older, it's gonna have more fog, obviously. It might be a little slower because of age, but we're just gonna see. This is just trying it out. I'll focus on the fence. Because this is using the new board on the inside, if you look at the comments on the previous video, the new board is a big improvement in terms of overall quality metering and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we're just going to see. Uh, what else? Uh, let me take a picture of you, Eve. Okay. There we go. All right. There's three photos. I'm going to let them sit for 30 to 45 minutes, and then we'll see how they look. All right. So it's been about 45 minutes since we were outside. The film is processed, um, and I can't wait to share the results. So here we go. If you take a look at the images, they're all a little light. I mean, definitely a solid stop or so light. But what's incredible is they all worked. If you look at the first picture of our little Victory Garden sign there, yeah, okay, you know, the background is washed out. It's just washed out in general. But overall, the processing and everything is pretty decent for a film from 2015. If you look at the middle image, You'll notice that once again, it's washed out, but it's not bad. And the portrait of my wife, Eve, who was filming this, you can see it's washed out and bright as well. However, all three images have really a feel of a vintage look. So now what I want to do is show you a side by side. So here's the picture of Eve. That was the original one that you just saw. And all I did was take the Polaroid app, the stupid app on the phone. I photographed it and spent literally 30 seconds in Snapseed in your standard photo editing software. And I was able to edit it to look like this. Check out that side by side. I mean, it's incredible. It has a really great vintage feel. And if this is a look that you like, it's a solid option. All right, so in this video, you can clearly see demonstrated that old Impossible Film, Polaroid Film, could still be good. Don't just assume because that use by date has gone by that it's no longer good, especially if you're a photographer who isn't looking for profession, who's looking for imperfection, the joy of photographic imperfection, and it's part of your process. If you've got a camera that can use eye type film, give it a shot. It can't hurt. If you're a photographer who only wants the perfect and you've got a lot of this film sitting around, pass it off to another photographer. There's no reason to throw it away. Someone out there will want this valuable photographic tool. Thank you very much for listening. Can't wait to hear your thoughts. Now go shoot some film.